Hi, I'm Opal Palmer Adisa, and just shout out to World Poetry Day. And those of us who are writers and poets know that poetry has always healed the world and will continue to do so. This poem is entitled, The Poet and the Poem. The poet sat with her back to the poem as the poem wept. The poet was not being indifferent. They had not quarreled or had a fallen out. Such were the times. The poet and the poem had had such fun together, laughing over the silliness of life, querying the vision of the rain, seeking the truth amidst the pile of lies, trying to fetter out the real meaning among the garbage of excuses politicians fed the people. But this was a new moment for the poet and the poem. They had not arrived at this intersection before and neither was sure which direction to go. Perhaps it was Ilegba, the old man with stars in his eyes, leading them down this perilous path. Or maybe it was Ilegba, the mischievous boy, trying to trip them up and send them reeling on their heads down the ruined road. Whatever it was, both the poet and the poem knew it was a season of quiet reflection. The poet sat serenely, her back against the wall, while the perplexed poem bawled pools of salty tears in which her feet pattered. The house had suddenly gone solemn. And when the poet listened, she realized the breeze had stopped its endless flirtation with the trees and leaves. Something was not right. Her perhaps in keeping with the latest technology where even if you are apart from your mate or lover, you could still share a kiss, a virtual kiss, if you can imagine that. Were there tongues and saliva involved? The poet wondered, but the poem did not respond. But what of the sensation of tongue probing or lips pressed against lips. No way. Suddenly the poem got up and the poet was forced to turn around in times to glimpse the poem just as it stepped out the room. The poet did not immediately follow the poem. She sat smugly assured the poem needed her, no matter their mutual dissatisfaction with one another in the moment. Theirs was not a relationship that could be uncoupled. Soon they would sit again in contemplation, sifting through a language as ubiquitous as the dawning of life. Soon enough, they sat down quietly together. Yes, they did, sat down quietly together. And the poet and the poem went back to her desk. The language was not helping them to communicate, so they glanced out the window for inspiration, as they often did. They saw the trees, head formed an horizon, and beyond the trees, the clouds formed yet another horizon. The poet breathed deeply. The world was not through with her yet. She was not through with the world. So the poem settled contentedly in the poet's head. Tomorrow there would be another song for them to write to free the diseases. They had to vowel another gap. They had to swelter a new language to shield the people's souls.